All right. I want to find some. Find one. Did Marcy's phone not work? You got a retarded phone? Yeah. Or is this Facebook? Hey, Dale. Carol. Can you, one of you guys hit the uh, sound? Please. Please. Well, I feel like I have. So. Well, welcome, everybody. I think I know or met everybody. We got uh, Paul here tonight. So, welcome to you. And I don't know the person behind you, Bobby. Hunter. So welcome to you. Uh, welcome everybody else too. So this is a special night for us. Oh man, Josh is in the house with his head on backwards. So, well, our beloved Chiefs did well last week. So we're two and two. If anybody cares, I think most of us do. And uh, looks like we got the Buffalo Bills this fr uh, Sunday night. So. Go Chiefs. <clears throat> uh, one on our uh, this week, uh, with Jim's help and my wife and the church office, we, we sent out almost all of our thank you cards to all of our sponsors. And uh, Jim, I think we got the, uh, did we get the sponsors on our website yes. yet? Yes, it is. So if anybody ever wants to, we, we have a website, it's called uh, lifeissuesonline.org. So lifeissuesonline, it's all one word. And uh, anyway, there's a list of tab there, you can see our sponsors. Uh, every two months I send out an update. And so the most recent updates are on there. If you want to just read about that, uh, you can read about our program, I mean, some of you are a little bit new, <clears throat> so we have weekly meetings every Friday night, as you can tell, uh, but we also have a one-on-one -on -one sponsor-led program, and uh, Pat Lee uh, authored our material, and uh, it's, God really uh, worked him through the program, and so he wrote it out, and, and uh, anyway, it's, we're going to publish it uh, very soon, and so we'll have a workbook uh, but right now we just we make copies and uh, there's two or three people going through it right now. But anyway, that's a one on one. So uh, you can come to our meetings only or you can come to our meetings and seek out the one on one sponsor led program. Um, and then tonight is a special night for the ladies because uh, Pam is going to start the emotion study for the ladies during small group. So we're going to try real hard to stop at 745 ish with this big group and we're going to have snacks and I want everybody to be in their small group room by eight. Can we do that? And uh, we try to conclude at 830, uh, 840 at the latest. So that gives everybody a good 30 minutes of small group time. So uh, that's the emotion study. And if you're not sure what that is, uh, you can set in on the first one tonight. It's about an 18 week commitment from the ladies and uh, Anyway, it'll be really good, and we're, we're hoping to give a certificate at the end. I don't know if we decided, really, but she's going to take, uh, Pam, you're going to take attendance, aren't you? And so we kind of decided you need to be there at least 70% of the 18. I don't know, somebody figure out what's 70% of 18. Is it like 14? It's 13? Who said that? Mark did. All right. Can we say that, Pam? 13 out of 18? So you can miss up to five of her sessions and still pass. But if you miss six, it's like the axe. You not only fail, but you have to do some kind of penance or something. What about those of us that do daycare too? <clears throat> well, so the good news about that is she is going to record it, and we're going to try to have a way to get that to you in an audio fashion. So you can listen to those that you miss. So that's developing as I speak. It's happening. There's someone's figuring out how to do that right now. But we have a recorder for her tonight. So that's the way you can make up uh, sessions you miss. That's a good question, Angie. But it won't count against them, right? Right. It, it won't count against them if they listen to it later. They can check the box later. That's right. 
Um, our sister Kelly can't be here tonight. She usually runs the uh, video, so we'll pray for her in just a minute, uh, her and her husband John. Uh, our brother Caleb, was that last Friday night that you spoke? Yeah. I thought so. So Caleb did great. And uh, some of you know uh, from uh, India, uh, we, most of us know Pradeep, but his, how is Jib, Jibbet related to him? Is that nephew. nephew or so? Anyway, Jibbet messaged me on uh, Facebook this week and said, "Tell everybody hi." So uh, I don't know if he's listening in on this tonight, but I said I would tell everybody hi from uh, Orissa, India. It's literally halfway around the world. Uh, I think it's like eleven thousand miles. So okay, brother Matt got baptized on Sunday, so that's cool. That's huge. And uh, some of you know our sister, Rebecca Wilbur. She graduated uh, from the Healing House program this week. Yeah, so she's still living. Yeah, uh, she's still working through some court stuff, but she was able to take this you know, certificate of completion to court. And so she's on a good path, and we're happy for her. And um, I think that's about all I was going to say. Oh, the harvest party. So October 23rd, that's a Saturday. And what's the times? 11 to 3. 11 to 3. So we have a carnival type event here. We're going to have it out back in the grass. And are we going to do the big tent? On it. We're thinking about the big circus tent. That's good for me to know. I, I got to put it up. <laughs> so I may need to call some of you strong young folk. Um, so... What uh, Chris and Lauren, they're in charge of the whole thing. And uh, I'm going to pass around a sign-up sheet. And it's already got some ideas, but if you can just show up to help, they will put you at a booth. You know, we might do a ring toss. I don't know if we'll do darts. That sounds dangerous. But we'll, we'll do have some type of activity that kids can win tickets that they can redeem for prizes. So it's a, really a good outreach. So... I'm going to pass, I bet you guys are already planning on being there. Let me pass it to Caleb. I'm kind of tethered here. Oh, man. Here, I got a pen. Do you need a pen? Okay. All right. So I think that's about all my announcements. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say is, uh, you know, we're a little bit of a hybrid. I had a lady from Pathways call me this week. She's like, you know, what is your ministry? Is it like AA? And it's like, well, it's kind of a hybrid between, you know, maybe a step program and a fa we're, we're faith-based, but uh, um, we're also connected with some of our materials from Reformers Unanimous out of the Chicago area. And so uh, th these booklets, if you, there's like 14 different addictions addressed in these booklets and if you see one that you struggle with, uh, take one. Uh, they cost us four bucks a piece. If you want to put four bucks in this little thing, you can. If you don't have four bucks, just take it, read it, bring it back, pass it on. So it's not a big deal. But uh, So we're, we're a little bit of a hybrid ministry. And one of the things that Reformers Unanimous says that I like, that I feel like kind of clicked with me this week, is uh, it says he, uh, the founder, Stephen Currington, it says that new levels bring new devils. And, I mean, I, I see this happening in our ministry that as people maybe get, you know, some sobriety and some clean time and they get some victory over some things, maybe the devil brings something else into their life. You know what I'm saying? And maybe they transfer that addiction into something new. Uh, and... Uh, uh, one of the things I struggled with when I was first saved was coming to church. You say, well, gosh, you're a pastor. You know, you're supposed to be at church. But I used to love Saturday Night Live. I would stay up late on Saturday night and watch Saturday Night Live. And, but every, every Sunday morning, I'm falling asleep in church. And so uh, there was just a night there that I just like... What am I doing? I, I've got to just push the off button 
And I mean, I was just being, you know, Saturday Night Live got pretty raunchy and, and is, but maybe uh, it's not necessarily evil, but I needed to do something better. And, and so I want you to think about this little phrase. You may not be tempted to do something evil tomorrow or tomorrow night, or, but sometimes the temptation we face is, should I do something good or should I do what's best? And, and let me give you an example of that. As I was leaving work today, a friend of mine, uh, Roger, uh, nobody of you know, is, is, he's a clear up by Parkville, but uh, I've been trying to witness to him, and he lost his wife this year, and he said, I got to work this weekend. He said, I don't think I'm going to come in tomorrow. I'm going to rest. I'm just going to come to work on Sunday. He's got like, you know, three or four hours of work to do this weekend. And I thought, you know, working's not a bad thing, but he had the option of maybe doing that on Saturday and then working on and going to church on Sunday. You see what I'm saying? You see the difference between what's good and what's best? And, and I think maybe all, and, and I still struggle with that. Should I do something? You know, it's not wrong to go to the lake, but maybe if, if I'm doing that every, every weekend and every Sunday instead of coming to church, then it, it you, know, you know, so anyway, that was just my little spiel before we get started tonight. Just new levels bring new devils, and uh, am I being tempted with something good instead of choosing what's, am I choosing what's good instead of what's best? So let me, uh, we're going to have our pledge to the Bible, but before I do, uh, is there any prayer requests we can uh, pray for you about tonight? Uh, I know we want to pray for our sister Kelly that couldn't be here. And uh, gosh, I scared you all with my levels and devils thing. So I'm not any. Okay. Well, let's, uh, Carol, can we put the pledge up and let's stand for the pledge. And uh, yeah, Caleb's passing this around. If, if you can help at our harvest party, please do. And uh, make sure Chris or I get that little form back so we don't lose all that so <clears throat> all right let's say our pledge here i pledge allegiance to the bible god's holy word i will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path i will hide its words in my heart that i might not sin against god let's uh, remain standing and have a word of prayer uh, <clears throat> lord we do enter your gates with thanksgiving and lord you say your uh, eyes are upon the righteous and your ears are open to their prayers and we, we pray you'll hear us tonight as we're uh, just gathered here on this uh, fall evening in uh, this little uh, field outside of Harrisonville, Missouri. Father, we pray you'll hear our prayer and answer according to your will as we uh, lift up our sister Kelly. She's not able to be with us tonight. We pray uh, she'll be uh, back soon. And for Chuck, I know he had something he was doing tonight, so we lift him up to you and keep him safe. And just anybody else that was not able to be here tonight for whatever reason, Father. Uh, but we do uh, stand here as needy people, and Father, we uh, are faced with just uh, many challenges these days. Uh, maybe temptation's a better word to choose good things over what's best. And so, Lord, help us uh, in our decision making. Give us wisdom to make uh, righteous judgment in our own lives and those that we uh, deal with. And I pray you'll bless tonight, uh, bless uh, your servant Chris as he speaks to us. We just uh, dedicate this time to you in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, well, you may be seated. You're already mic'd up, aren't you? Good evening, evening everybody. Whoa. Didn't do a mic test. Good evening, how's everybody doing this Friday Good Friday, right? You know, like I've said before, that every Friday is a good Friday. Uh, so yeah, welcome to everybody out there joining us on Facebook. I'm glad to be here. Glad everybody's here. So just to kind of start it off, we're gonna, in the world that we live in, just there's a lot of stuff going on in our world. A lot of um, teachings and beliefs and lifestyles and just just crazy stuff going on in our world that we live in, right? And so. The question is, how can we know what is real? How can we know in the time of uncertainty with just the, the with COVID and with the, all the policies and mandates? I mean, what can we know what is real? And when, so the question is, what is truth tonight? 
And uh, this is a question that Pilate asked Jesus at his trial. And uh, so what I want to do, I just want to read a little bit of this in John 18. Um, I don't think you have that up on the screen, but if you have a Bible, you can turn there. Uh, And this is just a little by way of intro. John chapter 18. uh, So Jesus comes into the judgment hall and uh, he's going before Pilate and uh, they're going to see what they can uh, find wrong with what he's done wrong. And we know that he did nothing wrong. But uh, let's just pick this up in uh, in verse 37. And so Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I'm, I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Okay? So those are Je- that's Jesus speaking. And then Pilate says in verse 38, Pilate said unto him, what is truth? And he had said this, and went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. And so this question of what is truth is, is a question that Pilate asked that every single person ever has asked this question. They've asked it in some shape or form, what is truth? Because when it comes down to it, we all want to know what truth is. We all want to know why we're here on this earth. Why has God created us? Why has all these things happened in this world? And but the thing is that Pilate wasn't really he wasn't really asking this question to, you know, search for an answer. Pilate was uh, really in, in a defeated and a sarcastic manner stating, uh, you know, what is truth that there. You can't really know truth, is what Pilate was saying, that you can't really know it. And, and he really reminds me of when we was in Boston, uh, we had an opportunity, uh, my father-in-law, Jim, and our pastor, Brian, and another guy from our uh, church, Brady Barnes, I don't know if you know him. Uh, about over a month ago, we went to Boston, Massachusetts, and we had a sister church planted a church out there. And we went out there just to kind of help them do some uh, you know, evangelism and just sharing the gospel, do some invites to church and uh, it was really, you know, non-confrontational. It was really, you know, you could just talk with people. But I had a guy, and uh, I'm laying out the gospel for him, and we're having a good conversation. And uh, he asked the question, he asked this question, what is truth? And I gave him uh, John fourteen six when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I said, well, Jesus is truth. And uh he, he never, he didn't, wasn't asking to really know the answer. He was asking just to get me caught up and try to debate me. And I didn't want to have a, a theological debate with them. I was just simply trying to show them Jesus and what he's done for us. And so we're going to have people in our life that's going to do that. They're going to question truth. And so here's a little definition of truth. It is the body of real things, events, and facts. So that's actuality. So it's the state of being the case. Um, It's a transcendent, fundamental, or spiritual reality. Uh, It's conformity to fact or reality. It's exact accordance with that which is or has been or shall be. Okay? Truth is the beginning to, it is the beginning and the end to all belief. So think about that for a second. That Truth, you're either going to start with it and live it out in your life, or you're going to start out with the lie, and somewhere along the way, you'll end up with the truth. Just hopefully it's in this lifetime. Hopefully it's before you pass, uh, and you know Jesus in your heart, and you have a relationship with him, that you know that truth. Because if not, it's going to be too late. So truth, what truth is not, though, Truth is not what is just understandable, right? Like we all collectively understand certain things, but that's not what truth is. Truth is not what just feels good, right? That's what a lot of people want to take truth as. What feels good? What feels right? What's truth to me? And what truth is also is not, it's not determined by the majority. Just because a collective, a group of people say something is true does not make it true. So tonight our text is going to be in 2 John. 
And those verses are going to be up on the board for you, on the power, on the screen for you. So if you have a Bible, you can turn there. We're going to be in 2 John. And so a little bit about John. So John, he wrote five books of the Bible. He wrote the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd of John, and then he wrote the Revelation of Jesus Christ. So John was the last apostle that wrote the last gospel, that wrote the last epistle, and that wrote the last book of the New Testament. So I thought that was pretty cool. So in 2nd and 3rd John, is actually, it's going to be kind of a two-part series. So we have uh, one part tonight, and then when I'm able to come back in a couple weeks, we'll probably finish this up. But, you know, these books are super long, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through them in, in a night. No, I'm just joking. They're not. The, there's, it's just one chapter. If anyone has read them before, I mean, you can read them in just, you know, a few minutes. And so you can't say that we don't have time and we're not, we're not able to sit down and read our Bible because you can read these in, in a few minutes here. So the epistle of Second John. And uh, like I said, we're going to break it down. There's going to be a two-part series to this. And what we have tonight is seven truths about the truth. All right, and these are going to come right out of the text. And this is something that how we can live and walk in the truth. OK, and how we can live for it and live by it. So let's just read all of this letter and we'll get into our message tonight. So uh, verse one, the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever, grace be with you, mercy and peace from the God, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ and the, the Son of the Father in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning that we... That we love one another. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that, as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that which we have received a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you to speak face to face that our joy may be full." The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. Okay, so uh, just covering in these first couple verses here, uh, we're just going to kind of break this down a little bit and, and talk about it. So we see the elder here is John referring to himself. He, he calls himself an elder, and he's writing unto the elect lady. And I do feel like I said, John, he's old. He's old at this time. And, you know, he's earned the right to be called an elder. He lived longer than any other apostle, and he was the only one that died a natural death. You know, all the other apostles died by persecution or martyred, you know, except for Judas, who, you know, we know who killed himself. And so it was John that writes this epistle to this elect lady and her children. And now there are several different beliefs on who this elect lady is. And we're just going to kind of lay out those a little bit. So some believe that this elect lady is the church as a whole is the body of Christ. Uh, but the church is never called a lady anywhere else in scripture. And actually this word is only used uh, in two verses in Isaiah. And in these two verses here in second John, we see the word lady. Um, so that doesn't really line up with scripture. Um, others believe that this refers to the Jewish people as in James 1, 1. But James uses the phrase to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. So that, that doesn't really line up either. And the lady could have been a Jewish convert to Christianity, but it's not written to the Jewish people. Uh, some believe that this was to an individual uh, local church, like here at Heartland, 
Uh, and that's a possibility because the lady was probably having, she was having church in her home and she would have traveling pastors and missionaries stay with her. But I do believe he's writing to a specific person. And so this, this book is, so it's really cool that it's the only book that I believe is written to a lady. You know, all the other epistles are written to men. And so it just goes to show that women are not left out that women are part of ministry, that women are part of what God is doing. I know sometimes it's easy to uh, put off the persona that it's all about men. But, you know, as a married man now, I I find that we got to have the women in our life. Right, men? (laughs) They they help us out. uh, That's why they're called our help meet. And, uh, you know, we we have to listen to them because they they have good knowledge and wisdom. And so I'm thankful for my wife. And I hope you are thankful for yours as well. So I believe this was an individual lady that John knew, and she was a godly woman, and she walked in truth, and she worshiped in truth. And she also trained up her children in truth, right? How important is that, you know, that you train up your child in truth? And so a a reason I believe that her name is not given is because this was a time of persecution, and if the authorities found a letter with her name on it, it could have meant death for them. So I do believe he left her name out, but whoever the lady is, she's called an elect lady, she's faithful, and she walked in truth, and she lived for truth, and everything, her whole entire life was this, was God's word. It was based off of truth. And so we see just in the first eight words of this epistle that it's easy to get mixed up on truth because I'm not necessarily dogmatic in saying that is 100% who the epistle's to, just based off of my own study There's a lot of different beliefs on who the elect lady is, and that's just from what I found in my own study. And so it really just kind of lets us, uh, encourage us to make sure we do our own study, because I don't want anybody to take my word for it. I want you to do your own research and study out the Word of God for yourself. Okay, so what we have, our first point. Our first point tonight is we need to love in the truth. And we see that. Right here in the first verse of 2 John, and we see it in the first verse of 3 John. In the first verse of 3 John says, The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I loved in the truth. And next time we meet, uh, we'll probably cover that a little bit. But tonight we see the first thing that we need to do, the first truth about truth, is we need to love in the truth. That is, these two cannot be separated. Love and truth, they must go together. You cannot truly love someone without truth. Because if you don't truly know them, can you truly love them? And you cannot speak the truth without love. So we need to love in truth, but also we need to love the truth. You know, we need to have a relationship with the truth. We need to love it. It needs to be in our heart. And so notice it does not say we need to love in a truth. Because there's a lot of a truth out there in the world. It is the truth. There's only one truth, and that's, the, that's a crucial fact, okay? So that's our first one, need to love and truth. Number two, we're going to cover, cover a couple of these, and then we'll get more into uh, the, the, the lesson, the book here. We need to know the truth, right? And like I said, it's right out of Scripture. He says, but also all they that have known the truth. So how do, we, how do we get to know something or someone? What do we do? Anybody? What do, like, uh, study, it. study it. Good one, Pam. Yes. What else? What, what do we do? If you're getting to know a person, it, spend time with it. There you go. That's good. Caleb, what else? Questions. Ask questions. That's a good one. That's the one I was looking for for sure. What else? Share. Share. Absolutely. Those are all perfect. We ask questions. We spend time with it. We study it. We get to know them. We, we form a relationship, right? You can't get to know something if you don't form a relationship with it or with him or her or whatever. But the big one is ask questions, right? You know, because the thing of, about truth, the truth doesn't mind being questioned. The truth embraces questions because it knows no matter what question you have for it, it's still going to be true. Because truth is still truth even if no one believes it. If everyone here has a completely different opinion and a completely different belief, it doesn't change what truth really is. 
And lies are still a lie, even if we all believe it. If we all believe a lie, it doesn't change it to be truth. So I came up with a little acronym here uh, for the word no. So when we need to get to know someone, uh, building relationships, we need to be kind-hearted. We need to be nourishing. We need to be open-minded. And we need to be, be wise. So that's a little acronym that when we're getting to know someone, I think it's really uh, applicable to anybody, right? Kind-hearted, nourishing, open-minded, and wise. And that's not being wise in your own eyes, of course. That's, that's a discernment and having wisdom of God. Okay, number three. I'm giving you the three, and then we're going to uh, go into the uh, letter a little bit more. Number three is the truth needs to dwell in us. Okay, and that comes from verse 2. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us. And this is a little bit more than just knowing truth, right? For something to dwell with you, it has to abide with you. It has to stay. It can't go anywhere. We cannot wake up one day and and know truth and, and do it, and then the next day do something that contradicts it. That's not dwelling. That's not allowing the truth to dwell with us. And so, you know, right, we're, we're wishy-washy people, right? We go back and forth. I mean, we're life issues. That's what we do. We, we are up and down, and we have a lot of things. And so, but that's not allowing the truth to dwell, dwell with us. We have to be consistent in the Word. And I've seen three things here that's just really cool that really stuck out in these first two verses about the truth. It needs to be internal. It needs to be external. And it needs to be eternal. And so, because he says that for the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, which shall be with us forever. Right? Praise the Lord if we can live our whole life and, and live out truth and, and never falter from that, you know? Internal, external, and eternal. I thought that was pretty cool. All right. So I'm going to read down through here just a little bit. We're going to pick this back up, though, in verse 7. Because we're really going to kind of get into why John is writing this epistle to, to this lady, to this elect lady. In verse 7 it says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. It says many deceivers are entered into this world. Not just a few, but many. Many deceivers. Think about the world we live in. How many people are trying to deceive you Every single day. In some way, shape, or form, the devil is trying to deceive you. People are trying to deceive you. Everybody has their own agenda. What is truth, right? So when we're in our addiction and we're living just a a chaotic, crazy life, who are we deceiving? Our family. I know I did. Our loved ones. Ourselves. We deceive ourselves, right? Right? A deceiver is defined as an imposter or a misleader or a seducer. In 1 Timothy 4, 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, say that seven times fast, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Praise the, war, praise the Lord that it only says some shall depart. Because if it said all shall depart, we're all in trouble. But it says some shall depart. There's going to be people that depart from the faith in Jesus Christ. There's going to be people that cause you to depart from your faith in Jesus Christ. And there's going to be some that simply just don't confess that Christ is real and that he never died and he never did any of the things that the Bible says that he did. There's a lot of different religions and denominations that don't claim the authority of Jesus Christ. They don't claim what God has done in their life as truth because they've been deceived. So it says there there are deceivers and then there are antichrists. Now, there is the Antichrist, and that's different. There is a 
um, a person. He's also called uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition, that wicked one, all these different things, all these different names. That he's going to come and he's going to counterfeit everything that God does. But thankfully, if you're born again tonight, if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, if you have the truth, you won't have to suffer any of that. You won't have to see the Antichrist. But it says uh, it's a little, it's a lowercase a, and there are, there are all other Antichrist, right? Because what Antichrist is simply just means anyone that opposes Jesus Christ or against what he teaches or says. So if we're not holding on to truth, then we're Antichrist. We, we are against Christ. If we, if we don't want to listen to truth and we don't want to believe truth, we can become Antichrist. Because it simply just means you're against it. You're against him. And so if you're going against what Jesus Christ teaches in his word, then that's what he says. We're Antichrist. Because these people coming in into the lady's home are deceivers and Antichrist. So they're out there. There's people out there in the world that are Antichrist. Because it says, as I said, I quoted it earlier in John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You know, that's one of the biggest struggles that people have is that, okay, I can believe in God. I can believe that there is a creator. I can believe that there is something out there more than myself. But can I believe in the fact that he sent his son to this earth and that he lived a sinless life and he went to the cross and he died and he was buried and three days later he rose again and he, and he did it for me personally? Like, you know, yeah, he died for the world, but he died for me? People can't get their minds wrapped around that. It's a hard concept. It is. Sometimes when you think about that, man, like, man, the God of the universe died for me personally? Wow. Wow. Praise the Lord. But look at, verse, look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Look to yourself. We need constant self-examination, and we need to keep short accounts with God. Daily, constantly, not, you know, all throughout the day. We need to make sure that our heart's right with the Lord. Has anyone ever heard the song by John Christ? Uh, a lot of you know he does like kind of spoof uh, Christian videos and stuff. But he did a rap song, and it's called Check Your Heart. And uh, one of the lines in there says, Do it in the dark so they never know. You should check your heart with a stethoscope. That's a hard word. Stethoscope. Thank you, Ed. Check your heart with a stethoscope, what the doctors use to hear your heartbeat. Because basically what that is saying is on the outside, we seem all spiritual and godly and we seem like we're doing the right thing. Like, like Pastor Steve said, it seems like we're doing, we're doing good things, but are we doing the best things? And so, but on the inside, we're, we're living in sin and it's a secret and we're in a dark place and we, we just keep on sinning. Because we don't want to lose all the progress that we made in our recovery and walk with the Lord. How many people like regressing and relapsing and going backwards? How? Uh, nobody, right? Nobody, nobody wants to go backwards in their walk, in their recovery, right? At least I don't. I don't believe anyone else here does either. How many people like to recover and, have a, and receive a full reward and gain victory over their addiction, right? We all do. Nobody wants to regress. Nobody wants to relapse. But we do. We fall into it. It's because we're not holding on to the truth. Wrap up these last few verses here in 9 through 11. He says, Whoso transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So he tells the lady, what does he tell the lady? He says, If there any come unto you, if there's anyone that doesn't believe this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. 
And verse 10, He that biddeth him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So this is what we need to do as John warned this lady. If anyone comes in unto your house, unto your household, and, and they don't hold on to truth, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, then don't receive them. And I don't just mean just your physical house. I also mean your spiritual house. Don't let people into your home or your heart that isn't holding on to the truth. and Because that's what it's talking about, doctrine. Doctrine is truth. If they don't have Jesus Christ, then don't let them in. Don't bid them Godspeed, which basically is to say that you're okay doing with whatever they're doing, that you're okay with it, and that you wish them a prosperous journey. That's what Godspeed means. And you're rejoicing about it. So if you're saying Godspeed to someone who's doing evil deeds, then you're a partaker of those evil deeds. Because that... They don't need to be bid Godspeed. They need to know the truth about God. That's what they need. I'm going to wrap this up with this quote that God just dropped in my lap uh, just a little bit ago today. And it was just really cool. I'm going to share with you. It says, you cannot see your reflection in boiling water. Just as you cannot see truth in a state of addiction and chaos. But when the water's calm... That's when clarity comes. So if boiling water, you can't see your reflection. You can't see truth. But then once it all calms down, you can see it. And so that's the first three points that uh, we, need to love in, we need to love in truth. We need to know the truth. And we need to have the truth dwell in us. And we're going to have four more points out of uh, Third John next time we get together. Uh, so hopefully uh, you can come back for that. If not, you'll be able to watch us on Facebook. Um, but what I want to do, I'm just going to have a quick word of prayer and uh, we'll be, go ahead and be dismissed. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this night. Thank you for this uh, a group of uh, people that just uh, came here. They decided to come hear your word instead of doing whatever one, uh, they could be doing on a Friday night. There's so many desires and pleasures that we could be had on a, on a weekend. And, but Lord, they decided to be here. And I just hope that you bless them. Uh, just bless the small group that we're about to have. Uh, bless our snack time, Lord. Uh, bless the, the woman's study that's going to take place, Lord. We are just thank you for all these things that you're doing in the ministry. And uh, Lord, I just uh, pray that uh, if anyone's here tonight, Lord, that if they don't know you, uh, that's under the sound of my voice. If you don't know Jesus Christ and you don't know truth, I just pray that you're able to get with uh, one of us tonight, get with Pastor Steve, get with myself or Pat Lee or someone that can show you in the Word of God how to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I wouldn't want anyone out of here not knowing for sure where they're going to spend eternity. And so, Lord, we just love you so much. Uh, Bless our food tonight. Thank you for those that prepared it. And uh, thank you for this ministry. We give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Goodbye, Facebook.